guest, a uh, fellow that got a little bit of history with, we'll, take, we'll talk about that a bit later, uh, Clifford Hode, how are you, mate? <laughs> Actually, uh, great, Steve. I'm good at the moment. I'm really, really happy. I nearly cut my finger off. <laughs> But um, I just went to the doctor's this morning and he told me that he gave me the, 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 you know, the okay. So uh, a second can change your whole life, hey, and really, you don't realise what's, what you got until it's, you know, it's, it's gone or it's been, um, I suppose, you know, the threat of never playing again freaked me out. But Tell us what happened. Oh, no, I don't want to. I don't, can I? <laughs> yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. <laughs> No, I was um, uh, just putting a, a jack under a car and the jack let go and grabbed my finger between the, um, a chassis rail and the jack stand, which is all made of steel, of course. And luckily, I got lightning fast reflexes, but I pulled my <laughs> hand out really quickly and uh, it just grabbed me, yeah. sort of basically tore all the, 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 the trunk of the finger off, which is my drumming hand, you see? Uh-huh. And I've been um, very worried about it, but... I'm so lucky. I, my my mum said the other day I could be dressing a stump, so I was whinging about how much it's been hurting. For yeah, me. yeah, yeah. So I'm really, really happy. I got still got my finger, and I'm able to keep playing, and uh, it hasn't all ended because it would end it. Hey, I would I wouldn't have been able to handle it. Just make sure this is a finger. I'm not like the the guy in Def Leppard who must be such a strong guy. That drummer, Rick Rick Allen, like, yeah. Like Rick Allen, yeah. He he. Uh, I was speaking to, speaking to Des Bailey from um, from England the other day, and he, he, he knows him pretty well. And I said, "You just tell him that I think he's one of the strongest characters." Uh-huh. Um, because if that happened to me, I, I really would, re- wouldn't have the spine to keep going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's just made of made of bronze, that guy. Now, um, normally we sort of start this with the newsy bits. So the newsy, the other newsy bit, aside from your injury, which uh, luckily you're recovering from, mm-hmm. is. Um, is your brother Jeff, and you yeah. put on Facebook that he doesn't want to play yeah. with either um, Kings of Sun or Richard Famous again. What's the background to that? Have you talked him around? What's the lo- what happened? Um, that it took me a long time, as I said, to 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 come to grips with it. That that was the, his reality, which means it's my reality, mm-hmm. and uh, no amount of talking has been able. And I've been, believe me, I've been trying. And the fans have been trying, but he's he he he. I can't speak for him, but he's a, like a lot of people. He's reluctant to to. He, he I think he feels in knowing him. I think Jeff feels that he gave his best at a time when he could give his best. He was a young man. He was hungry. He was feisty, and, and I just think he's coming to a stage in his life now where he feels like he'd be a parody in a sense to get back up there. Mm. That's what I feel. Mm-hmm. But um, also, you know, we've been dealing with each other for such a long time. Uh, we're at an age now where, you know, he's looking at me going, you want to continue, I don't. I'm upset with him because he doesn't want to continue. He's upset with me because I want to continue. Mm-hmm. So it's like a inertia mm-hmm. situation. But mm. uh, I'm not, I can't wait any longer. Mm. Because I, you know, my life, uh, I can't put on hold any any further, and uh, he's he's quite happy with this decision. You know? mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure there's a, a part of him that wants to, that would love to always get up there and play music, and because he's such a fantastic showman, I don't know how he shut that part of his soul down, mm-hmm. but, he, but he has. Mm. Well, I can't. Mm. Has there been an opportunity, like for actually Kings of the Sun, to perform as Kings of the Sun recently, <laughs> and that you've had to? Turned down, or is it something you want to do, or is it, or is that a, a dead entity? Well, what's the situation there? No, uh, because the original members mm. uh, are still um, ones in Melbourne and ones in Sydney, and uh, no, it come down to Jeff. It come, mm. it come down to Jeff and not wanting to relive the past, mm. basically. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And it feels like you know, it's all the music's there for anyone who wants to hear it, and the film clips and things, and, and in the band's in people's memories. And that's you now I think he wants to to, to, to leave it. You know? Okay, um, I with, thought uh, we might divide this up. We're back with uh, Cliff from uh, Kings of the Sun, and we were going to talk about the past, but this. A lot of Past, questions. future, it's all the same. <laughs> there, there, there's a lot of uh, a lot of questions about the present. Like, what is um, look into, what my, it, look into my eyes. 
What are you planning to do? What were you like? Remove your wallet. <laughs> What are you playing? What's happening at the moment? What's happening at the moment is uh, a whole lot of things that I've wanted to do have crashed together at the same time because of when I hurt my hand, I wanted to finish a project uh, which was building this particular car that I hurt myself doing, which has been a, a rejuvenation of my psyche. And in doing so, I was able to step back and look at the legacy of music that I will have left behind with, with the band and um, it's made me feel a, uh, I don't know what you'd, what, what you'd call it, but I feel obliged to, to, to go back out and take the music back out there uh, and play to a whole new crowd. Mm -hmm which would mean playing festivals in, in Europe, which have been offered, and things like that. And, um, keeping the legacy of, of the band alive. And also, I, you know, let's, let's, let's not to mention that I love drumming, and I've been drumming since I was you know, 10 years of age. So a big part of myself, I had to push to the side and got involved in other things. And learned to play tennis, saxophone, a lot of jazz. Um, building the cars that have scored all different parts of myself that I didn't know existed, you know, abilities and things. Mm. So, I don't know, well, should I keep this rock and roll or what? And I've been built, I've built brass shell snare drums. And, so I'm, I'm going to get back into the music and form, get a new band. I want to get a new band together. Are you going to call them Kings of the Sun? Uh, I don't know yet. That's, a, that's, a, that's, that's <laughs> something that I, that I have thought about, but I, I, just, I just don't know... Uh, yeah, it would, it would all depend on a lot of things. You know, right. I, I, uh, I started the band, and I'm going to finish the band, and I told my brother that. Um, it feels, at this, at this point, it feels impossible to go out there without him, mm -hmm. as Kings of the Sun. Um, so I would just like to think that I'm going to get the, a great band together, and I'm going to see how it feels. And and take it from there, but at this point I can't honestly say that I will or I won't. And what yeah. what music are you going to be playing? Um, well I want to do uh, write some new tunes, I've got a whole lot of new tunes and a lot of songs that never got recorded with Kings of the Sun, probably start off with, we probably do some Kings of the Sun uh, tribute songs, you know, the main ones that people loved, uh, just to get us going, some classic rock uh, covers. Mm -hmm. You know, three or four covers that people, most people know. Santa Small Pigs or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just, just to get, make you know, people an understanding of uh, where, where we're coming from. Um, I'm excited about it. I'm really excited about it because I know it can, I know it can, uh, I know it can happen. Worst part about it is because I wrote all the songs with my brother. I know I can sing them, but it's a matter. It would be a matter of me going out the front. Which yeah, is yeah, not yeah. My gig. Yeah, yeah. But I do know the songs, and I know how they how they need to be delivered and sang. Mm. So, you know, that would mean getting another drummer, which to me is like the idea. I don't want <laughs> people to be then coming and seeing a band that doesn't have the same singer or the same drummer. I mean, I'd rather just eliminate, like, uh, do without one. You know. So, Can you sing them behind the drum stool? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, there's there's been a lot of history with drummer singers like Don Henley and. Mm. Uh, out of the hard-ons and it, it, mm. it, if you ever go to one of those shows you don't get a sense that the band's moving because yeah, yeah. sort of stuck there yeah yeah and uh there's, there's a chiropractic problem there too <laughs> because you see what that's <laughs> <laughs> and you eventually sort of you know have a use by date yeah. um and i just you know I why know. why did you and jeff stop playing as kings of the sun anyway yeah. like well, what happened uh, when we come back from America, which is in 74, we've been over there for six years mm. and music changed so much and when we, we did our last album, which was Resurrection, Resurrection, um, which is a fantastic record, not many people have heard that, uh, we came back, music had changed, hip hop had come in um, and a lot of rock bands got dropped off the labels and us being one of them. 
mm -hmm. didn't have enough sales or enough interest to, to, to sustain us to keep us going. The record company changed and we had to come home. Uh, that was that's, that's what, what, what happened. And I would have loved to have stayed in America, but we didn't have the stamina to stay there any longer mm -hmm. as a band. Um, or even personally, you know, we were out of Malibu and in you know, a house. And, you know, it was great living there, but um, when we came home, I think we did a tour with Barnsey with an American bass player we had as a three-piece, you know, they were good shows, and then uh, Jeff and I sort of pulled back and had a rest for about a year and a half, and then we recorded a fourth album, which was never released. Mm. And I just released it recently on the, on the site, it's called Daddy Was a Hobo Man. Mm -hmm. that's, that's basically the Kings of the Sun, the fourth CD in transition into the future. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we got disenchanted with that, we did a few shows, and felt like Rock had died and no one was interested in it anymore and uh, oh, so people were telling us, Rock's dead, this is in, you know, mm. whatever happened. Um, so we didn't ever release that album, we pushed it under the bed and uh, had another break for about a year and a half and realised we wanted to play again and then we eventually started up the Rich and Famous. Mm, mm, yeah. mm. Okay, time for our chat with Cliff Hode from Kings of Sun or from a band to be named. <laughs> you don't, we don't know what it's. We don't know what band to say you're from at this point, do we? No, no. Uh, but I will keep people informed because I got a uh, a uh, Facebook site and, yeah. uh, and, and, a, and a website, so um, I'm not going to rush myself into that. As I said, when I make up, make my mind up about what I want to call the band. I mean, Jeff and I did learn that when we, when we were in the rich and famous that a lot of Kings of the Sun fans who loved us didn't even know we were out there playing who we went to Sydney, Melbourne, blah 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 yeah. and that was very frustrating not being able to grab potential fans and a lot of people saw us we worked at, we worked very hard when we were overseas you know we went to Europe and the States and just constantly toured and so there's a lot of people out who saw the band and uh, it's just it's trying to drag people back in and a lot of people in Australia too mm. uh, old, old fans who aren't on Facebook who, who, who would never never have a computer yeah. it's getting to those people <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. The, hard, the hard part so you can make it hard for yourself or you can make it easier we were never a big band um, as such but uh, we were a strong band and we had, a, we, had a, we had a really really good fan base you had the opportunity is that right to maybe play festivals in Europe or the US, but you would have to call yourselves Kings of the Sun, is that um, right? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, the, the stranger things have been known to happen. Uh, you can, if, if people people are into the band these days, if you just say you're a formal member yeah. of such, such and such, yeah, yeah, yeah. they just say you know, Dave Evans has been over there as a singer of ACDC, and he just calls him a former member of ACDC, and people want to know who's been talk, talking about this. There is a, 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 an incredible interest in, in, in uh, I suppose you call it 80s rock, or mm. especially Australian 80s rock, because um, it was very different to American 80s rock. <laughs> uh, so I like to think that the fans are smart enough to, 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 to uh, understand that a band's coming through that isn't necessarily the original band. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, but, um, now I had a little bit of trepidation about getting in touch with you because of 1988. And uh, that story, and I actually uh, went to my um, storage room um, the other so, day. And, uh, I mean, apparently on Wikipedia it says that that was a pivotal moment in the history of Kings of the Sun, that mm. that night in Sydney. How do you look back on it? What actually happened? You know? Well, it wasn't a pivotal, pivotal moment at all. It was just uh, um, a pivotal moment is... People have actually said that that was the end of Kings of the Sun. I mean, we, that, that's, that's not true. We went on to do two more albums and two in Europe, and I mean, it was like it had nothing to do with it. I mean, he, he wasn't that um, uh, important in the rock, rock and roll business to be able to pull a band off the road. But uh, basically, history has shown that that anything that comes out of that guy's mouth can be taken with a grain of salt now, you know, including yeah. his own band members. So, if he was ridiculous and oversensitive back then, he's the same today uh, and it doesn't wash with people anymore you know, uh, he's, the, he's the guy not coming on to out leaving people sit out there for two hours not turning up to gigs and and, 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 and and doing all the things that are really really 
are disrespectful to uh. his fans and his band members and even himself. Mm -hmm. So whatever he said about me or Kings of the Sun, he's just water off a duck's back. I never mm -hmm. thought anything of it. When I said those things, I meant them, as I said in, when I wrote to you the other night. Mm -hmm. uh, that it wasn't necessarily aimed at Guns N' Roses. It was aimed at the Australian uh, press and the Australian public and saying, well, okay, make a, make a fuss over Guns N' Roses, but at least know that Rose Tattoo exist mm -hmm. because that's where they're getting their huge inspiration, uh, inspirational source from. Mm. And it was like, let's pretend that they don't exist. And that's all it was. Mm. It was like, you know, uh, and, and of course at that time, uh, these bands like Guns N' Roses or Motley Crue at the time I was in America weren't actually coming out and saying there's a band called Rose Tattoo in Australia that we're, mm. we're getting stuff from. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was almost like, uh, well, we've got our influences, but we're not going to tell you who they are, which mm. I didn't think was that great. Yeah, that was the amazing thing. Like I watched um, the movie about Rose Tattoo, uh, Rock and Roll Outlaw, and you could almost think from a, as an LA marketing guy, you go, you know, give, give them a singer who's a bit taller, <laughs> you know, long hair, and this will work, you know, and it was almost... It was obvious, almost that um, that that, that and, and really, angry is kind of responsible for the even the um, popular. I think he's responsible for the popularity of tattoos in the Western world, mm. really, because mm. the LA bands copied him, yeah. and then everyone copied the LA bands. That's, you know? a, that's exactly right. That's what I was talking yeah, about. Yeah. You got to give uh, credit to the source of, of, of things. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I suppose they were, in a sense, they were, as it was unknown to me anyway. They mm. were doing uh, Nice Boys, don't, don't play rock and roll. And, but I remember when we first went to Sydney, uh, Jeff and I, we first got to Sydney, Rose Tattoo took my drums down there in the back of their truck. So yeah. angry, uh, we've always been relatively close with the band. And, uh, I was walking through, um, is it, what's the big street that goes up to the Coke sign? Is it George Street? Uh, William Street? William Street, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, just off to the right there, uh, I pull up this little roadway with my brother. We were just walking, ambling, and we, we saw Ian Ryland up there. Uh, in, living in a terraced house, and he, and he started up that band Sardine. And he, t he, he was, he, I didn't, have, didn't even know he was on Rose Tattoo. So yeah. uh, it even goes back to him in his, in, in his um, inspiring the band members because they all had the Rose Tattoo ring. And he yeah. showed me his Rose Tattoo ring and said, I wrote all those songs. And I went, What? <laughs> and he, but you know, Rock and Roll Outlaw, Bad Boy for Love, Ian Ryland. Yeah. And then he'd had his differences and they, they parted company. He went more alternative and underground uh, and uh, Rose Tattoo stayed with the heavy rock. Yeah, yeah. But that guy never got his just desserts on it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he took us into the house and told us the whole history of it. But I suppose I've gotten off the beaten track, but um, I think you've got to wear your influences on your, on, on, on your sleeve and let people know. Mm, mm, mm. I just didn't feel like Guns N' Roses were mm. at the time. And maybe what I said upset them more because it was the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, you only ever really react to, to, to what someone says in, unless there's a little bit of element of truth in there. Mm -hmm. But as I said to you, Slash came into the room, mm. handed me uh, uh, an, an autograph, uh, no, a, a letter from a fan outside, because mm. he grabbed it and she said, will you give this to the drummer? And he came in and he was speaking to me and he gave me the letter and he was fantastic. Mm. He was like, he didn't care about it because, mm. as I said to you, he, he was confident enough to know that bands, people say things, and mm. he, he knew he knew he knew in his heart he wasn't ripping off anybody because mm. he, he plays like nobody. Mm. He's an incredible guitar player. Mm. He's just got a style. He's like I call him like a modern day Mick Taylor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's just a beautiful guitar player. And so he was okay, but the other guy was screaming down the hallway, and he was just <laughs> rolling his eyes at it. Yeah. <laughs> and then. Uh, of course, my brother being the feisty person he is, someone has a go at him, he'll he'll have a go back and, you know, um, drop his pants and the rest is history. <laughs> you know, but uh, it certainly didn't, I wouldn't call it a pinnacle moment, it was just a pinnacle moment as far as, as, far as uh, Sydney crowd was concerned. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because we went on to do many shows yeah. after that. Well, if you could go back and, and change anything from those days, is there anything you'd change? Like, would, would you like... To have spent more time overseas, more time here. Was there anything that you could you would do differently? That's a no. I I, I don't. I don't think. Um, I probably. Uh, 
wouldn't change anything actually because we, we we had a wonderful time. We we made three, fan, four fantastic records, and the music's timeless, and people still love to play it. And I never thought that would happen. Mm -hmm. I thought people would, because there was a point in the early nineties. Oh, hang on. I suppose the, the mid late nineties through where people were really disinterested in rock and roll, and I thought, oh, that's it. Our music's gone. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's old hat. It'll never come back. Mm. And uh, time's proven again that music is a cycle. It just, just mm. keeps turning over. And rock and roll, what rock and roll is, I see what rock and roll is, this is probably why, why Jeff's got a good, a good um, uh, method in his madness and it's not coming back. He believes that rock and roll is testosterone mm. and attitude. Mm. And that's what it's always been from, from Elvis, uh, Jerry Lee Lewis and Little Richard. It's like a... It's just, it just gung ho, and, and and as you get older, you lose that, and you can you can fat, you can play acting, but the initial thing that gets all those songs written is this, the hunger mm. and that 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 mm. that, that uh, attitude that you have to have that angst, teenage angst is what mm. it is. And some guys can carry that through all the way, you know, but it, it, it certainly is something that you you. It can't they feel like how are we going to get that magic back, mm -hmm. it, it, which is youth really. But some people can. Some people can just keep drawing on it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like Iggy Pop and people like that. Mm. They just they're just, they're just, they're just warriors. <laughs> they can just get. They can step back from the cushiness mm -hmm. and everything that softens them. All the the, the 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 good and bad things that they've heard about themselves. They can just wash it all aside and just go back to the core of what they are mm -hmm. and become and, and be that. I'm fortunate is I'm, I'm fortunate to know that I can get behind the drum kit and come alive in, in any situation and I don't know how I've retained that probably because of my true love of the drums I never really cared about being famous or rich it was a point of the music mm -hmm. and uh, that's how we started the band and I think people can hear that when we were never a band for effect you know a lot of bands yeah, yeah. get together quickly for, for effect yeah, yeah. And, uh, and they want to blow people out with how different they are or whatever. But Kings of the Summer are an honest rock and roll band. Yeah. We're on the Gold Coast, and um, how big a part of the Gold Coast was Kings of the Sun? Like, if you're from Melbourne, would you be in Kings of the Rain? <laughs> I mean, I mean uh, is it a big... that The whole Gold Coast thing. And then do you still have, like, up here, you know, a, a cachet, like people all, all know you guys, or is it... Or, or did you have to go overseas to find that, you know? Kings of the Sun had nothing to do with the Gold Coast. It was Australia, mm -hmm. the sun, we were known as the sun country. Mm -hmm. And Kings of the Sun, Jeff and I saw a movie one day when we were in Sydney, all, all uh, um, just about to form the band, and uh, we saw a movie which is called Kings of the Sun, and we, mm -hmm. we took it from that. Mm -hmm. uh, Your Brenner starred in, and it's about the Spanish going into South America looking for gold mm -hmm. and just chopping the everything down in their paths and mm. we said that's it we've got to be we've got to call ourselves that because yeah. we come from here and we're going to go for gold yeah, which yeah. never happened but we we were went looking for gold yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 and have you got a favorite before we finish um i remember back 20 years ago asking about like touring with kiss and stuff and touring with uh, yeah. all these bands you toured with you got a favorite tour story i mean i remember hearing about gene simmons wick uh, stuff like that, and that was years ago. I mean, <laughs> that was he, he was wearing a wig in 1980 something, you know. <laughs> Hero, dear, there's so many, there's so many. But, Anything um, you can tell, though. <laughs> yeah, my, my favourite was, I think, um, seeing Gene, being in Belfast and seeing Gene Simmons uh, at the end of the hallway with his um, bulletproof vest on. Uh, at that time, that was like this was really unsure times in Belfast. Yeah. He was him being an American. He was paranoid that he was going to get popped. <laughs> and, uh...